With millions of players, epic protagonists, and pages of lore, The Elder Scrolls has cemented itself as a gaming staple. With The Elder Scrolls 6 looming on the horizon, let's prepare by recapping everything that's happened so far. The Elder Scrolls takes place on the continent of Tamriel, on the planet of Nern, in the spatial realm of Mundus. Mundus, which contains a few planets and moons alongside Nern, was constructed by a group of godlike beings called the Anuic et Arda. The Anuic et Arda that gave the most of their power to the creation of this plane are now known as the Aedra, or Eight Divines. Soon after Mundus was created, there was an exodus of et Arda. Many felt that they had been betrayed by Lorcan, the being who instigated the project. However, the Eight Divines had invested so much of their power into Mundus, they were unable to leave. They claimed that Lorcan never told them of the sacrifice they would have to make. Where they were once omnipotent, they found themselves weak husks tied to an alien plane of existence. They thus ripped Lorcan's heart from his chest, sending it flying across the sky. Although they had been manipulated into giving everything they had, they found solace in their revenge. Following this Dawn Age was the Merethic Era, when linear time starts to arise. It was at this point the main sentient species developed. Elves, men, Argonians, Khajiit. There are conflicting narratives about how these beings came to be. They were either created by the gods, or they evolved from the remnants of the less powerful spirits that chose to stay in Mundus after Lorcan's death. The Merethic Eon saw the elven races thrive, often at the expense of humans and beast folk. Elves explored every corner of the continent, and at its heart blossomed the Aeliad Empire. These elves were cruel but industrious people, enslaving the savage humans whilst building monolithic structures that would survive thousands of years. Equally notable are the Dwemer, the elves who built underground cities and achieved amazing feats of engineering beneath the lands of what is now Morrowind and Skyrim. The following era is characterised by the shift of cultural, political and military dominance from elvendom to mankind. Catalyzing this was the human rebellion led by Alessia against the Aeliads. This uprising was a success, not least due to the help of the Aedra, and in its wake arose the first human Cyrodiilic Empire. In total, this empire lasted almost three thousand years, and its end under the Riemann dynasty marks the closure of the first era. That is not to say that these centuries were entirely peaceful. Most notably, there was an invasion from the continent of Akavir by the Seichi or Seisiesi. Emperor Riemann defeated the Seichi, but incorporated many of their civilization's elements. For instance, the appearance and military tactics of the Snake People inspired the Blades, the Emperor's bodyguards we see in Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. The second era dawned and ended in peace, but intervening was instability. Political union dissipated after the assassination of the potentate, the de facto ruler of the empire at that point. This instigated dynastic disputes, and without the centrifugal force of a strong emperor, the continent erupted into war. This alliance war, fought between the Old Mary Dominion, the Ebonheart Pact, and the Daggerfall Covenant, paved the way for the plain meld. This was an unprecedented event. The Daedric Prince of Domination, Moloch Baal, attempted to merge his own hellish plane of oblivion with Nern, perceiving the Alliance War as a ripe opportunity to do so. The Daedric Princes are the divine beings who did not invest themselves in Mundus. In other words, they are gods with their full powers intact, omnipotent beings in their own planes of existence. Moloch Baal and many of his peers want nothing better than to torture and manipulate the mortals of Nern. The Alliance War and the Plane Meld are the subject of The Elder Scrolls Online, the 2014 MMORPG. An alliance of heroes eventually defeated Moloch Baal and his minion Manamarko, but as of yet, the Alliance War has no canonical winner because ESO is still running. In the latter stages of the Second Era, the legendary Tiber Septum arose from the ashes of the Alliance War. This dragonborn fought to unify the continent under Cyrodiil's imperial yoke once more. With the help of the brass god Numidium, a construct made by ancient elves called the Dwemer, Tiber Septum annihilated any opposition and secured his dynasty's place 
as the undisputed rulers of the continent. Thus began the third era, the age in which the first four major Elder Scrolls games take place, Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind and Oblivion. Arena starts in the year 389 of the third era. Emperor Uriel Septim VII is locked in oblivion by his imperial battle mage who disguises himself as the emperor. He also sends the player character, among other witnesses, to die in the dungeons. The Staff of Chaos, which holds Tharn's life force, is the object of the player's main quest once they escape the imperial dungeons. This staff was split by Tharn into various fragments. The protagonist has to visit every corner of the continent to retrieve them. After confronting and defeating Tharn using the staff, a portal opens to oblivion that allows a much more older and haggard emperor to return to the mortal plane and resume his post. Where Arena's map encompasses the whole continent, Dagger Falls entails just the Iliac Bay region, between the provinces of High Rock and Hammerfell. In Dagger Fall, Uriel Septim sends the protagonist to free the ghost of King Lysandus from his earthly shackles and to discover what happened to a letter the emperor sent to the former queen of Dagger Fall. It transpires that Lysandus' mother, Nolfaga, knows the location of a legend legendary artifact called the Mantella, which is the key to resurrecting the new medium. The massively powerful brass structure created by the Dwemer and used by Tiber Septim to conquer the continent. The player finds out that Uriel Septim wants to claim the new medium by using the Mantella, but six factions beside him ultimately vie for the artifact in order to control the brass god, and the player can choose who is successful. However, every ending is canonical as every faction manages to access the Mantella. This is known as the Warp in the West, a mysterious event in which time distorted, allowing each faction to use the new medium to limited success. Each managed to achieve their goals to some degree. Before the events of the Warp in the West, the Iliac Bay region comprised 44 independent regions under the Empire. Afterwards, there were only four, Daggerfall, Sentinel, Wayrest, and Orsinium. The third Elder Scrolls game is set in a dark, ash-ridden country with a volcano at its heart, Morrowind. The player is the Nereverine, the prophesied reincarnation of a legendary Dunma leader from thousands of years ago. Nerevar was purportedly killed in a fight between himself and Dagoth Ur, one of his lieutenants, who used some powerful Dwemer tools on the heart of Lorcan to turn himself into a god against Nerevar's wishes. Nerevar's death is clouded in ambiguity. Those who who reportedly fought with him, Vivek, or Malexia and Sothasil, betrayed his memory by using the tools to achieve apotheosis after his death. Some have theorised that it was they, not Dagothur, who murdered him in cold blood. Thus, the Nereverine exists not only to defeat the main villain, Dagothur, but to confront the morally bankrupt ruling tribunal. Pushed forth by Uriel Septon VII, and with the help of the Daedric Prince Azura, the player sets out to right the wrongs of the past. In the intervening thousands of years before before the Nereverine's arrival, Dagoth built an army of zombie-like minions and stole two of the Dwemer tools of Kagranak and manufactured a deadly hive mind disease. After acquiring the Dwemer tools needed to alter the heart of Lorcan, the player battles Dagothur and splinters the heart once and for all. A corollary of this is the demise of the Tribunal, who are similarly dependent on the heart of their divinity. In the expansion pack, Tribunal, the Nereverine deals with the fallout of the main quest. Driven mad by the gradual loss of her powers, Omelexia kills her fellow god Sothasil and embarks on a course to rule Morrowind as a tyrant. In a showdown in the Clockwork City, the player puts her to the sword, leaving Vivek as the last of the tribunal. Vivek's powers slowly waned, and with time, he disappeared. Seven years later, the Emperor Uriel Septon VII and his heirs are murdered by the Mythic Dawn. Next to the Emperor, just before his demise, Uriel tells the player to close shut the jaws of oblivion. The death of the Emperor leaves the Dragonfires unlit, as the only safeguard preventing Daedric forces from invading, it is imperative to relight them, but they can only be relit by an emperor wearing the amulet of kings in a coronation ritual. After enrolling with the Blades, the Empire's secret service, the player learns of the last living Septim heir, Martin. After rescuing him from a burning chapel and spiriting him away to Cloud Ruler Temple, the player finally confronts the Emperor's assassins. The Mythic Dawn, a cult devoted to the Daedric Prince of Destruction, are led by the elf Mankar Cameron, an immensely powerful mage with his own pocket of oblivion. After slaying Mankar and reclaiming the Amulet of Kings, which the Mythic Dawn had stolen, the hero of Kavach, as the player is now known, helps to close oblivion gates 
across the land. Eventually, Martin Septim is led to the capital, recognised as emperor and brought to the Temple of the One to relight the dragonfires. However, Mayrun's Dagon arrives, disrupting the process. In a cathartic fight, Martin breaks open the Amulet of Kings and becomes invested with divine power, banishing Dagon and his Daedric forces to oblivion, whilst sacrificing himself in the process. The Oblivion Crisis undermined political stability in Tamriel. The Thalmor, a small political faction that espoused elven racial superiority, painted themselves as the saviours of the Somerset Isles. The public believed these claims, and in the 22nd year of the Fourth Era, the Thalmor seized total control of the Isles. Seven years later, a Thalmor-backed coup overthrew Valenwood's government, and both countries proclaimed a union, the third Old Merry Dominion. For the next 70 years, the Dominion and Empire had little contact. The Empire, too weak to reassert its authority, took the view that the Dominion should be left unprovoked. It's probable that the Dominion too suffered from civic unrest, both from the Wood Elves and Valenwood and non-Thalmor dissidents in the Somerset Isles. However, in the year 100 of the Fourth Era, this all changed. The Old Merry Dominion declared that they had caused the return of Massa and Secunda, two moons critical to the birth cycles of the Khajiit. This increased Thalmor popularity in elsewhere, and under the Dominion's influence, the land split itself into two client kingdoms that swore fealty to the Dominion. Ten Tensions with the Empire finally exploded when the Thalmor invaded Hammerfell in the year 171, instigating the Great War. The Dominion quickly advanced into Cyrodiil, the heart of the Empire, and met little resistance. The Imperial City fell, but the Emperor Titus Mede II escaped and rallied his Imperial legions in Skyrim. The following year, Titus obliterated the Thalmor army in a colossal battle outside the Imperial City. But Titus knew that his legions were exhausted and decided to sign a peace agreement called called the White Gold Concordant. The terms were that Talos worship was to be banned and Southern Hammerfell be given to the Dominion. Talos, the ascendant Tiber Septim, was anathema to the Thalmor because he was a god who was once a man. His god status undermined their claims to elven supremacy. As you can imagine, banishing the worship of one of humankind's most beloved gods was a controversial decision. The ramifications of this would be especially felt in Skyrim. Hammerfell rejected the Concordant, declaring independence and continuing to fight the Thalmor alone. After five years, they had managed to fight the weakened Dominion to a stalemate, and a treaty was signed, ejecting the Thalmor from Hammerfell completely. By the year 201, the Dominion and Empire settled in an uneasy Cold War. And this brings us to the latest Elder Scrolls game, chronologically speaking, The Elder Scrolls V. In Skyrim, the player is the Dragonborn, a mortal with a dragon soul. The protagonist possesses the ability to shout, the Thum as it's called in the dragon tongue. After escaping from Helgen and defeating the first dragon at Whiterun, the Greybeards at High Frothgar inform the Dragonborn of their powerful nature. After looting the tomb of Jürgen Windcaller, the player meets with Delphine, joining what is left of the Blades. Alduin is found to be the one responsible for the dragons returning. An age-old being, Alduin is the world eater and first among dragons. After learning the dragon grounding shout Dragonrend and enlisting the help of Parthenax, Alduin is defeated on the mortal plane but not killed. The player then enters Sovereign Guard to stop the World Eater once and for all. Although Alduin's soul is not absorbed because he still has a role to play in the universe, as his title suggests, Alduin's purpose is to eat the world once time has come to its natural end. So rather than killing Alduin in Sovereign Guard, the Dragonborn resets him to factory settings, as it were. The Civil War is Skyrim's other significant storyline. Fought between the Stormcloaks and Imperials, it's believed by the former that the Empire was weak and cowardly to outlaw Talos worship, in line with Thalmor demands. The latter, led by General Tullius, claim that the Civil War is exactly what the Thalmor wants. It weakens the Empire. Many Imperials advocate worshipping Talos secretly until they're strong enough to take on and defeat the Thalmor. Either way, the canonical outcome of the war is unknown. We will have to wait until the next game to find out. The Dragonborn faces down two more villains after Alduin, Harkon and Mirag. The former is a vampire lord seeking to blot out the sun to allow vampires to reign supreme. The latter, the first ever Dragonborn who wants to carve out his own dominion on the continent after being banished to Hermaeus Mora's Realm of Oblivion. This brings us up to date, but what about the next Elder Scrolls game? The Second Great War has to feature somewhere. Either it will have already happened by the time of this 
second game or we will be embroiled in it. Either way, it's too big an event for a game to sidestep. I believe its presence in some way is almost a certainty. This fits with the Elder Scrolls 6's probable setting, Hammerfell, the province previously on the front line in the war against Dominion. Equally, if the developers seek to continue the ethos of Skyrim, then sword singing may be a replacement for the Thume. Sword singing is an ancient practice that is insanely powerful. It is said that this is what caused the continent of Yokuda to sink. Necessarily, I have skipped over some details in this video, lest it become too long. For instance, I didn't elaborate on DLCs that I felt didn't add to the main trajectory of the series. This video acts as an overview if you want to learn more, then I recommend visiting the UESP wiki or watching a YouTube video on a topic. There's a wealth of amazing lore videos out there by a variety of different people. Please check the description for links to some of the most important articles and resources. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, then please feel free to subscribe. I bring out new videos all of the time. Anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.